Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is lesson 104. And we're going to be talking about Jesus rebukes Peter in Mark 8 and 33. Um, the reason God had me to talk about this is because we as people don't know that demonic spirits can live in us every day of the week. Uh, demons can live in us every day of the week. Uh, and the reason being because we really don't know they're there. We can speak out a term sometime, and, that, and, 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 and that's what you say. It's be, it, it could be coming from the devil itself, himself. So God wants me to explain this a little bit better to you because um, Jesus had Jesus had the same problem when he went on the mountain and um, fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Satan came to him. The evil spirit, Satan, came to him and spoke to him. And he wanted to give him bread. He wanted to give him, took him to up to the uh, uh, up up to the mountain and showed him everything that he could give. He said, you can have all of this if you just fall down and worship me. This is this is his whole purpose, is you to worship him in all his evil doings. And Jesus wants you to worship God in all your holy doings. Whatever you do must be holy. There are only two spirits. Satan's spirit, which is evil, and God's spirit, which is holy. So you must understand that. You either work for one of two spirits. Uh, your spirit is just a neutral spirit that joins together with, an, with one of these two spirits. That's all it is. You can't live on your own. It just won't happen. That's not the way God intended it. That's not the way he planned it. You can't just say, well, uh, I'm neither with, with the devil or I'm not with God. I'm just, I'm just my own self. No, you would, because anything other than God is evil. So now you follow the path of evil behind Satan, just like he did. He didn't want to obey in heaven. And so what he did was he followed his own self-doing. So he became evil. And that's why you're either following one of two spirits, holy, a holy and, 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 and godly spirit or an evil spirit that belongs to Satan himself. And so that's why God wants me to talk to you and let you better to better explain it to you so that you know what you're dealing with, so that you know when... You meet people, you know what you're dealing with. And um, let me read this scripture right quick. And this is coming out of Mark 8, 31 through 33, how it all began. Jesus prepared his death and resurrection. That's what he brought to the disciples. This is what he was trying to explain to his disciples. In 31, he says, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and after three days raised again. 32 says, he spoke these words openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him. He didn't even know what he was doing. He was still carnal-minded. He was still carnal minded. So you do not know the things of God. And this is what we got to understand that if we are carnal minded, we don't know the things of God. We don't even know God's plan. We don't even know what he's going to do next. That's why you must stand still like Paul did and wait on the Lord so he can tell you and give you direction for you to do, for you to do something that he wants you to do. And then number 33 says, but when he had, turned around and looked at his disciples. He rebuked people, P Peter, saying, get behind me, Satan. He called Peter Satan. What he did, he called out that spirit that was in, Satan, in, in Peter. That's what he called out. It was a spirit that was trying to control uh, Peter's mind, a carnal mind. So he rejected that spirit. He knew it was coming straight from Satan because Satan had got into his mind and influenced his mind.
to think the way he did. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. When you think nothing about the, but the things of men, you don't think about what, 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 what God is trying to tell you. You have no clue. No clue. And that's just like your parents. Your parents, can, when you're a child, your parents can't tell you what's going on in the house or how to run the house because you're, too, you're, you're clueless. You're too young. You're too inex inexperienced. You have not been old. You have not gotten old enough to even learn what your mother and father have to do in the house to keep it going. So the same thing here. Peter and the disciples did not know because they were just slaves up until the time Jesus made them friends. And um, and the reason uh, being is because uh. Let me read this further before I go with that. <clears throat> the summary, I'm going to read the summary. I'm going to just go back and forth, summary of the scriptures. And then it says the commandment, the command, get behind these Satan. Spoken by Peter, by Jesus, it is recorded in Matthew 16 and 23 or Mark 8 and, 20, 8 and 33. Get behind these Satan, since seems harsh and out of character of Jesus. Uh, especially when this uh, addressed Pete, especially when he addressed Peter, one of his most devoted, devoted disciples, meaning he was so devoted, G Peter, James, and John, they loved Jesus more than the other disciples. I mean, they just stayed around him all the time to learn as much as they could. And they was devoted to Jesus. They was, they was willing to give up their life for Jesus. Why did Jesus say this? What was what was it Peter did to, de to deserve such a rebuke? Without knowing it, Peter, Peter was speaking to Satan. No, Peter was speaking of Satan. Peter was speaking of Satan because he didn't know. He was too carnal minded to understand the things of God. He didn't know what the things of God was. He didn't know the plan of God because Jesus never spoke it to him. This is the first time Jesus spoke of what he was going to do. So, but he did it to, I guess he did it to see what they were going to say or see how they would react. You know how sometimes we do with our children, we say things to see how they're going to react or see what they're, in, uh, um, see the, the impression on their face or see what, how they're going to speak. And uh, because you already know they ain't on the same line, they only ain't on the same line you are. So therefore we got to know things sometimes. Jesus had just re revealed, listen at this, Jesus had just revealed to his disciples for the first time his plan. He was too good to, he was to go to Jerusalem, listen at this, to suffer, to die, and to be raised to life. And, that, and um, contrary to their expectations of him, Jesus explained that he had not come to establish an earthly uh, Masonic kingdom. As at that time, the disciples were not prepared for this new revelation. They weren't prepared for his dying. You just got here. We need to know much more about the kingdom of God. We need for you to teach us. If you die, how who's gonna teach us? Who's gonna be the best what they said at one time? Who's gonna be the leader after you go? You see what I'm saying? So therefore they did not know the things of God like they should have known, should know. Because of the demonic spirits that still influenced them, that still lived in them. And that's the reason why it was so important that Jesus explained things to them. And now this is where Jesus will explain many more things. Every preaching he went to, they came inside of the house in private. They spoke to Jesus and said, Jesus, what did you mean? What did you, what do you mean of what you just said? Jesus broke it down to them. He explained to them what he meant by what he said in all the parables. 
that he spoke, he explained it to them. Um, again, it's just, uh, let me see now. Disciples of the medical through P though Peter's understanding understood his word, he simply could not reconcile his view of the consequences Messiah with the uh, conquering Messiah with the suffering and death Jesus spoke of. So Peter began to rebuke Jesus for having such a fatal, fatal, fatalistic mindset. He thought Jesus was wrong. You know, this is outrageous. You gonna die and suffer? See, they didn't know what you were gonna die and suffer for. They didn't understand that either. You see? And um, then it says, unwillingly, Peter was speaking for Satan. His plans and his his plans. No, I'm sorry. Speaking with Satan. Like Jesus' adversary, Peter was not sitting his mind on the things of God. See? His ways, his plan, and his uh, purpose. Peter wasn't doing that. And you'll find that in Colossians 3 and 2. Uh, also in Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. Um... And another thing, too, I've got to mention, too, and you'll find this in Timothy uh, 1 and 7. It says, that it talks about the, the, the fear. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, sound, power, love, and a sound mind. Satan works off your fear. He works off your emotions. He works off a misconception. He won't tell you the truth about the word. He'll tell you part of the truth to make it seem like the truth. So therefore, you will take anything that he tries to give out to you. You'll accept it, especially when it comes in um, having things like he tried to give Jesus. Here, I can give all of this to you. He's the ruler of this world, so he can give it to you. And you'll be worshiping him too. That's his whole plan. If you fall down and worship him, you see? Because that's what he wanted God to do in heaven. He take over God's throne and he, God, worship him. He talk crazy. And anybody in this whole world is crazy when you think you're going to uh, take over God's throne or any other throne in this world. So this is what Jesus was trying to explain to, to, to his disciples, that there's another spirit that's living in you. And you must know what it is and who it is when it speaks. If you do not know the plans of God and there's any other plan that you bring bring before, before you and it's not God, it's Satan. He had to let his disciples know that. And let's go uh, to 1 Corinthians. No, 1 Chronicles. No, 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 not 1 Chronicles. Chronicles 3 and Three and two. I'm, I'm just going to read one all the way through eleven, and then it talks about. It says number one, this is a carnal, uh, not car, not carnality, but Christ. It's not about being carnal, but it's about all about Christ. Number one says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Number two. Set your mind on the things above, not the things of this earth. Not wealth, not cars, not houses, not jobs, not people, places, and things. Don't set your mind on that. Set your mind on the things above. Because if you don't set your mind on things above, now, the, now you give the demonic spirits a chance to take over. And, 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 and they will work through you. And they will use you. They will control you. Look at Judas. He was one of those ones that did not set his mind on the things above. The rest of them did. The rest of the, the, rest of the 11 did. Judas was the only one that didn't do that. 
<coughs> he set his mind on the things of the world. He was the money. He was the money. He was the he 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 was the money collector and keeper. He kept all their monies. So therefore, he only thought about money. That's all he cared about. That's why he sold uh, 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 Jesus out for thirty pieces of gold. That's why he did that because the only thing his mind was on money, making money, making money, not knowing Jesus, not knowing Jesus' will and his ways. So therefore, a demonic spirit entered him. He was given the opportunity to know Jesus or to know Satan, and he chose Satan. He chose Satan. Money was much more important. So therefore, this is when the demonic spirit entered him because he chose, he made a choice, he chose it. Now the demonic spirit can control him. He could have the desires of the Antichrist. <clears throat> and he would practice all the Antichrist doings. You see, that's the same way now. If we don't know Jesus' word, we will do the same thing. We will do the same thing. Okay, for you died, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. For when Christ, who is our life, appear, appear, appears, when you also will appear with him in glory. In the last day, we're going to appear with Christ in glory. In the new Jerusalem is God's glory, and his presence will be with us. He and Christ will be with us. Number five says, therefore, put on death. Your put on, put put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, cleanliness, passion, evil desires. You see, you see what I'm saying? Covetousness, which is adultery. Adultery. Number six says, and all of these things I just named. They are demonic spirits that's controlled by Satan. These are demons that's lurking, angels that's lurking to, to, to make sure you do wrong and make sure it, it feels so good. You know that you know what I'm talking about, to feel good, to act, look good. Oh, man, you're so beautiful. You see what I'm saying? Look, so, come on. This is the, this is, these are the spirits that control you, the demonic spirits. Number seven says, in which you yourself once walked when you lived in them. You once walked this and you, and you lived in them. Don't be like the Pharisees. They walked in them, but they kept on walking in them. You see? Scribe, Pharisees, Sadducees, they walked in them. And we do too. If we don't recognize who we are in Christ Jesus and who is who. You got to know who the devil is. If you don't know who the devil is, you're gonna fall short of the glory of God every time, and you're gonna miss out on heaven too. So you, that's why it's so important. God wants you to know this. That's why He allowed me to teach you this, so that you can't say when you get in heaven in the last day on Judgment Day, you can't tell you, "Well, I didn't know." No, He said, "I'm not gonna allow you to be ignorant." Uh-uh. You're not going to make it in because you're ignorant. No, you're going to know because you're going to hear, hear the word one way or the other. And I'm raising up people to, to tell you the word, teach you the word. <clears throat> and then when he says, but, but now you yourselves are to put off all these. This is what you put off now. All these demonic spirits, let them go. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. Out of your mouth, put it off. Those are demonic spirits. Mm. Do not lie to one another, demonic spirit. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds, demonic spirits, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge, you see, knowledge, the word of God according to the image of him who created him. God, this is what you got to put on. 
Number, number 11 says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, uh, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. You see? He's all and he's in all. Everybody got a piece of God living in them. Because the breath you breathe every day, it belongs to God. It belongs to God. And um, let's go back where I was. Now, let me go on down here to, to Isaiah 50, to just back up the New Testament, 55, Isaiah 55, 79. <coughs> In violation to the Lord's salvation. We violate the Lord's salvation when we take on all these other angers and stuff like that, wrath, malice and stuff. We do violate God's salvation. Uh, number seven says, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thoughts of doing wrong. Banish it. We don't need those the doing wrong things anymore. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. Remember he said, God's mercy endure forever? Yes, turn to our God, for he will forgive generously. He sent his own son to die for our sins. He didn't have to do that. But he knew that was the only way we could, that we can be rejoined to Jesus Christ, to his will, to his way, to his lifestyle. He says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, saith the Lord, and my ways are, are far beyond any, anything you could imagine. Number nine says, for, you, for just as the Heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. All right, let me go back to the summary part here. And it said, instead, his mind was set on the things of man. This is what Peter's mind was set on, the things of man. Because that's why that's, he's been living like that for for as long as as long as he'd been living. So that's what his mind was always set on. He didn't know nothing else. Until Jesus came along. Okay. The things of the world and its earthly value. That's what your mind is set on. A lot of people right now, you go to church, but your mind is set on those kind of those type that type of things. It ain't God. And God ain't pleased with it. Because you're letting these demonic spirits control you. And yet you try to hide it. That's how Satan does. He know how to he know how to drift in and drift back out. You see what I'm saying? We'll do this, but as soon as you think you're getting caught, uh oh, let me go act let me go start acting like God again. You see? Oh, he know how to do that. He's well trained. Uh Jesus was saying that the way of the cross was God's will. The plan of redemption for all mankind. Peter reacted. No, Peter's reaction was most likely shared by the other disciples. Through although, as they as always, it was Peter who spoke first. Peter was uh, evidently being used by Satan. In thinking he was protecting Jesus. He had a good heart, but he was thinking he was trying to protect Jesus. But Jesus had a plan, God's plan. and But this is what Peter didn't realize. He had to fall in line with God's plan. A lot of us don't want our sisters and brothers to die, but it's going to happen. It's God's plan. We can't stop God's plan. We just fall in line with it. That's all we can do. I didn't want my brother to die last week, but he died. I have to fall in line with God's plan because it was time for him to go. Just like it's going to be time for me to go one day. It's going to be time for you to go one day. But we have to fall in line with God's plan. Satan has uh, purposely tempted Jesus in the wilderness, listen at this, to divert him from the cross. 
You see, he wanted to divert Jesus from the cross. Satan knew what he was doing. Because if he knew he could get Jesus to sin just one time, he could not go to the cross. And that was his whole intention. His whole intention was for Jesus to fall down and worship him. From, for, and, and from filling the goal. No, no, no. The, from filling the grand design of the Father and the Son. That's in Mark uh, 1, 12 through 13. Innocently, Peter was doing the same thing. He had not yet grasped Jesus' true Masonic purpose. You see? So he was doing the same thing. He hadn't, he just hadn't grasped everything yet. Uh, let's go to Mark 1 and 12 through 15. Uh, 12 through 13. It says, immediately the spirit, this is when Jesus, when the dove came out on Jesus, when he was being baptized. Immediately the spirit dove him into the wilderness, drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, uh, tempted by Satan. And was, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. The angels ministered to him. You see what I said that earlier? We have angels that minister to us. And Satan has angels that minister to you as well. Demonic spirits, demons, they minister to you. They want to get you to follow them so they can get you in a trap. And you don't have no way out. Or you think you don't have no way out. So we have to be very careful about the things that we walk in and the choices that we make. 